Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Got another exciting battery test, teardown, and review for you today. This time from Time USB. It is their Group 31 size format. Trolling motor edition battery. 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, of course. And they're claiming low temp charge protection. And by the way, Time USB's motto is time full of energy, useful, stable, blissful. So I'm going to find out if that's the case today. So let's get right into it. So time for the capacity test on the Time USB 100 amp hour trolling motor edition battery. I used the Time USB 40 amp charger uh, for the first time on for my battery testing. That did save a lot of time. So it just completed charging. Let me try to show you right there the little, see the little green light on right there. So it is complete. So let's see what the voltage is after completing charge before I hook it to the capacity rig right there. So what do we have right here? 13. 0.67 volts upon completing charge. Uh, I did check it. I didn't catch it on camera. It went to 14.58 and then stopped charging. So here's the time USB battery hooked up to the capacity rig. Uh, the capacity meter has been zeroed out right there. So no energy moved through yet. The inverter is still off. Still sitting at 13.53 volts. So now I'll turn the inverter on and then I'll connect the load. So here is the load for the capacity test on the time USB. As you can see, we're still at zero right there. So plug in my load right here and we'll see what it settles in at. So the capacity test is underway on the time USB 100 amp hour trolling motor edition. The load is 36.62 amps on the battery, 476 watts uh, worth of draw. And that is charging a portable power station. All right, at the roughly estimated halfway mark on the capacity test for the Time USB battery, do something a little different. It's halfway discharge, plus or minus. So I'm going to hit it with a hard load for a few minutes and make sure the BMS can handle a large right, current. So here goes another load on the Time USB. Should get us up around 100 amps, plus or minus. So I'll leave it like that for just a few minutes when it stabilizes. I don't want to run it that hard for very long because I don't want the capacity test affected even by just a few percent, but just a few minutes at 100 amps will really not affect the final outcome that much. So it's settled in now at 95.88 amps, 1187 watts coming out of the Time USB battery. So I said I'll give it a few minutes right here and then uh, I'll disconnect. Make sure the BMS can handle this 100 amps. All right, I think that's good enough. It proves that uh, it can hold right near 100 amps on the BMS. I don't want to affect the capacity too much on it, which a real world test, you know, on an inverter and everything. You're not going to have a consistent little, you know, measly 20 amp load. It's good to hit them and see what they're made of every now and again. So let me disconnect the load here and we should settle back in around 36, 37 amps again. I'll leave it there for the remainder of the test. About to roll over the 1280 watt hour mark on the Time USB trolling motor. There we go. 1280 watt hours, 11.5 volts still under load, 41 amps. So, yes, the Time USB has delivered its rated capacity. So, that's how much of a bonus we get. Voltage is starting to plummet off on the Time USB. So, almost 100, and we go about 102 amp hours out of it. I so said the voltage is fixing to drop off and it'll probably cut off any moment now. So I'll just film live and then I'll cut you in at the very end when the inverter shuts down. <whistles> All right, there it went. So I have to give the BMS a second to come back online to see that tally. I think it was 1309. Right, so I drug it all the way down to low voltage cutoff. Took it about five minutes to bring the voltage back up to re-trigger the BMS. So 1308 watt hours was the total on the Time USB trolling motor edition. So just a touch over 102 amp hours. I said I pulled it hard for a little bit, so I may have lost an amp hour or two to, to heat with that pull, but you know, that's pretty good. We got over delivered capacity. One thing of note, Time USB does have a very nice manual. Uh, you know, for their battery shows you everything you need to know. Uh, I will give you a screenshot of the parameters right here. I'm not going to bore you with that. Uh, if you want to see that, just pause the screen.
One thing to note in the parameters is the low temp protection. See, low temp charge protection function, yes. And Time USB has a very nice manual. I said this is a Group 31 size format battery. Um, you know, pretty standard size. Uh, you trolling motor people, please tell me how you want to see trolling motor batteries tested. I don't own a trolling motor, so I have no idea how you operate those, but they're claiming this battery can support a 70 pound max thrust trolling motor. So, you know, there's that if you're into it for trolling motors, but I think probably most of you are looking at it for energy storage or off-grid applications. So that's the test I'll cater to, but you trolling motor folks, please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see, and I'll try to oblige. Let me give you one good final look at the Time USB trolling motor battery before I tear it apart, because it is teardown time. So, you know, here it is before it gets destroyed. Just showing you the full the design, the logos on both sides, all that nice thick ABS plastic case, serialized and all that good stuff with all your specs right on top of the battery for your quick reference for out in the field if you don't have your handy product manual. So, uh, you know, that's the last time you'll see it in one piece. So now it's time for the teardown. I'll crack the lid on it and we'll see what it's made of. All right, as always, I saved the last little bit of glue for you. So... All right, the lid is off now. A double seal lid right there, so very difficult uh, to access. A uh, little bit different BMS than I've seen in some of these budget-friendly 12-volt batteries. Uh, let's see, we got three 10-gauge, 200-degree jacketed wires on the negative. I'll give you a report on the positive lead in a second. It feels like an eight or a six. I'll cut that back and we'll find out. So uh, let me take this lid off right here and I'll break it down a little bit further. Let me check these connections too, make sure they're they're tight. Yes, everything is tight. And we got some sealant right there uh, to help hold it in place. The same sealant that was under the lid, which is, uh, it's a little stretchier than regular black polyurethane that a lot of them use. So this has a lot more give to it. So, you know, very, very elastic. So, you know, it is what it is. All right, and my assumption of a six gauge positive lead was correct right there, six gauge 200 degree jacketed uh, with a hydraulic crimp connection on the end looks pretty good don't see any issues there put that over to the side I'll insulate it in just a second before I work on it anymore and I said there's the three number tens on the negative with a nice hydraulic crimp there as well and one thing of note on the lid it's got a little vent hole right there uh, you can see the little hole right there you can see the little filter media so similar to a couple of other brands I've worked with. Um, if it wasn't meant for the, the BMS being different, I'd say it's a carbon copy for, for something else, but you know that's not here nor there. We're focusing on this right here at the moment. You can see all this sealant and stuff right here, how thick it was where it had a double lipped seal in there. That's how stu that stuff's so hard to get off right there. I mean, it's it's on there something serious. Just look at that. It's, it's hard to get off, so it's got a good seal. I don't know if that's going for waterproof or not, but you know, if you're going for waterproof for trolling motors, I don't know if you would have had a weep hole or vent right there in the top of the lid, but yeah. So here's the cells and the BMS out of the case right there. Doesn't that look vaguely familiar? I had a viewer comment uh, that, you know, he's, he learned some information about these batteries, but I mean, that's a very nicely built cell pack right there. Look at the nice welds, uh, expansion joints right here on the cell connectors on the bus bars right there bolted or machine screw excuse me balance leads on everything looks very very similar to uh several other very popular brands let's just leave it at that and we got a temperature sensor right there ntc sensor going right there and i've got another one right here here's where they pin out at got another one going up underneath the heat sink of the bms so we got dual sensors on there nice solder connections on the bms you see an extra wire right here coming off the positive lead well they got a pin out on here for b plus heat i don't know if you can see that right there but there's no no heating function no heating pads in this battery so i guess this same bms they use for a self-heating version and this just pre-made wires is why they have this on here i don't see any other reason to have that there but there's your your B plus heat connection right there, B plus heat. And then if you had the heat strips, the pin out would be right here for the actual heater. So that's a heating capable BMS that appears. So I was trying to get the sticker off of this. It just peeled, peeled all the way up. I was trying to get the data 
data tag on this. Oh, 100 amp charge and discharge it looks like, which that's what the manual says. Uh, of course, it's gonna ruin the the uh, the script on there, the text. See, 100 amp, that's it. Looks like a 4S 100 amp and then 100 amp discharge. I do not know what the other information is right there. And I do not know the brand on this BMS, but I'm gonna dig into it a little further and see if I see a indicator on here to maybe who has made the BMS. See if I see some familiar model numbers. But just give me a good shot. Look at that double heat sinks on this one. Super thick heat sinks. Uh, yeah, that one's that's a serious BMS. So this is the foam over the relief valves on the battery, the relief windows. You know, so if, if something ever does rupture, it can vent. Uh, just showing you more of the wire management. I mean, that's that's nice. Look at that fiber tape down through there. They routed the uh, NTC sensor underneath this expansion joint on this bus bar right here. I mean, nice cable management. You know, pristine pack. Nothing to gripe about uh, on this battery. I mean, tie band compression, corner guards, uh, fiberboard spacers between each cell. Uh, you know, nothing nothing going on there and then give you a zoom in on the qr code i will try a decoder on it and if there is information on these cells i will include it on a slide here in a moment but there's your numbers right there if you'd like to look this stuff up on your own or in case i can't find it but there's all the information and those appear to be fresh qr codes they're not regrinds or anything like that so for all intents and purposes, those appear to be brand new sales. I don't see any indication of used sales or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, I didn't find any other model numbers or nomenclature on the board. So, it's, you know, their own uh, custom contracted board, it appears. I thought it might be a side hang or something like that because it's it's kind of similar to a side hang, but then it's got some traits for some from other brands, but... I said no identifying number, so it must just be a custom unit for Time USB for this trolling motor edition. I don't know if you're going to see this very well, but you see the black wire, I'll put an arrow right there. Uh, that is the other NTC sensor for this BMS, and it is tucked in right in the FET bank right there. So any kind of overheating or anything, that sensor is going to pick it up quick, now, a lot quicker than a thermal switch. So that sensor should react very quick if we have an overheating condition. Now, I like what I'm seeing with this BMS. Very robust. All right, so I'm going to check the high and low temp cutout on this battery, on this time USB. I got my little power supply hooked up uh, to the battery charging. And here's the NTC sensor on the cell pack. So I'm going to hit it with high temp first. I'm going to shoot the hair dryer on this sensor and see how long it takes to cut off or make sure it actually works. So if it works, you'll see this drop to zero over here. So I'm going to hit it. All right, there it went. Exactly 30 seconds, according to the camera viewfinder. So I'll cool it off, should get back to charging. All right, there we go. Nice. All right, now time for the low temp protection test. Ice pack right here. Gonna wrap it around this NTC sensor and uh, hopefully we will trigger. Let me get everything where it'll make good contact. So. Here we go. Watch the charger. Wow, that was really fast. Really fast. Uh, that was, looked like the viewfinder 15 seconds, but I will double check. And if it's different, I will let you know. Wow. That's pretty quick. So now to share my final thoughts on the Time USB Trolling Motor Edition battery. Uh, can I recommend this battery? Yes, if you're looking for a good performing battery, this as advertised, yes, this is a good battery. And just so you know, Time USB is often a budget priced alternative to some of the other popular brands that are on Amazon and other online marketplaces. This is built just as good, if not better, than some of your other brands. The ones you know I'm talking about. If y'all are into batteries, you know the ones. Um, so yeah, time USB, time full of energy, useful, stable, blissful. Yeah, it was useful, yeah, stable, uh, blissful. I mean, 
yeah, I enjoy working with this battery, so I guess it was blissful, besides getting the darn cover off the top of the case there. But yeah, very good battery. So I'll leave a link in the description so you can look into this battery further and decide if that may be the right battery for you. Uh, but yeah, I'm completely happy with it. And special thanks to you, the viewer. Without you, this video would not have been possible. Love it when y'all comment in my comment section. I love talking to you in the comments. Love getting your questions and things like that. Appreciate when y'all hit that like button. So thank you all, my viewers. Thank you all for watching. I really, really appreciate you. And also, Time USB, thank you so much. This video would not have been possible without you either. I appreciate you sending this sample. Really liked it. Keep up the good work. Thank everybody for watching. Thank you, Time USB. Y'all have a good day. Be safe and take care.